Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafon, your favorite radio host, your only radio host on Between the Lines. I have with me Dr. D. Anthony Miles. He gave me the permission to call him D. But we're going to do the formal introduction, Dr. D. Anthony Miles. So today we're going to be talking about how to get away with murder in marketing. Now that sounds kind of horrible, and this is not a horror story, but we're going to make it sound good, and we're going to show you how you can get away with murder in marketing. Let me just give a brief introduction of Dr. Miles. He's an entrepreneur, award-winning researcher, award-winning professor, legal expert witness, and best-selling author. Dr. Miles is a nationally known expert in the fields of entrepreneurship and marketing. He is a startup and marketing expert. He has appeared in the national media for his expertise. He is CEO and founder of Miles Development Industries Corporation, which you will see soon because I'm going to show you a screen share of his website. Uh, consulting practice and venture capital acquisition firm. He's also host and executive producer of Game On Business Talk radio show. Now, he sent me a long bio. I'm not going to go into all of that, so I'm going to just end it right there. And you will get to know Dr. Myers on your own when you see his website, and you can contact him yourself. And actually, the title of this show, How to Get Away with Murder and Marketing, is also the title of his upcoming book. So it will be easy to remember, Okay. So welcome, Dr. Miles, to Between the Lines. Good morning, Miss Corinne. How are you today? I am fine. Drop the miss and just call me Corinne. I stand corrected. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. How so you I'm, doing, Corinne? How you doing I this am morning? Good. I am good. D, Dr. D, or D. All right. So that's what we're doing today. So we're talking about how to get away with murder in marketing. Now, I don't like to talk about gruesome stuff, and I don't like horrors. Okay, so let's not make it gruesome and make people feel like we're going to be killing anyone or killing marketing if anybody's name is marketing. Okay, this is marketing the activity. <laughs> this is marketing the activity. And you're an author. So we are catering the show to, to authors primarily, but also just in general, marketing techniques and, and the whole concept behind, I guess you will be sharing strategies, tips that people can use um, that are creative to help them in terms of getting more visibility, credibility out there. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, the book is a book is a really different book in the marketplace. Um, the book has been a uh, it's a continuation of two uh, prior fields of study: uh, forensic accounting and forensic economics, okay. and uh, it's investigative sort of marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. When you deal with a client that has marketing problems, you're like an investigator. You go in and see what problems that they have. Mm -hmm. And that's what basically my book is about. I have about five categories of how to conduct uh, uh, a sufficient forensic marketing investigation. So, okay. But really, the book is called How to Get Away with Murder Marketing. It's about forensic marketing. Okay. What do you mean forensic marketing? That's on CSI. Kind of. Uh, a lot of, well, forensic marketing is you look at things such as, like, when you investigate things, you look at uh, damage to your brand, things of that sort. You look for things, say, uh, what's, what affects sales, mm -hmm. how are sales affected. Um, look for things like, okay, uh, your sales were down from last year. What's the problem for that? What, three or four competitors in at the marketplace that you weren't aware of? Uh, so when you do a forensic marketing uh, uh task you look for things that affect sales and profitability so that's basically what my book is about forensic marketing how to investigate marketing problems basically that's what it is okay so you talk about things that are affecting sales and profitability Correct. So people, people are adopting adapting or creating new strategies coming up with strategies or those they have seen others have used tried and proven and, and using them themselves. What, you know, and it may not be working for them, it may be working. Should it be that they, they, they look, they, they do the reverse, I'm trying to think it through here. Should they just adopt these things and apply it, implement it, or should they look at the things that have been affecting these people's sales and profitability and then decide on the marketing strategy? Uh, marketing is about interesting field of study, Corinne. <laughs> that I say is the most interesting. Then I'll say it for this. Uh, this well, what I mean is uh, this: people, out of all the fields of study and business, people think they know marketing. They don't treat marketing like a science. Yeah, people who think because they build a good website, they know they know marketing. 
Yeah, people think because they put a nice ad together with nice flashy pictures, they know marketing. And marketing is so much deeper than that. So what I, to answer your question is when you look at strategy, strategy encompasses many things. Strategy encompasses tactics. Strategy encompasses looking at in your business internally and also looking at your business externally. So you have to merge the two together. What's going on on the outside of the business and what's going on on the inside of the business. So if you're saying that your strategy is outdated, that makes a lot of sense because your product is no longer competitive in the marketplace. So when you say your strategy could be outdated, that's a really, really good observation. Mm -hmm. It's like you're like the guy that owns a newspaper who refuses to put his newspaper online and he wonder why people don't buy his newspaper anymore because they can, they can go on the internet and read the newspaper and they don't want to buy, they don't want paper stacking up in their houses. Mm -hmm. You have people that refuse to change. Yeah. And a lot of times it's too late when it's time for them to, when they should have changed and roll with the, I guess, the trends. Mm -hmm. But by the time it's too late, so next thing you know, they're out of business and because they didn't take a look at their strategy. Strategy is really a really difficult thing. Strategy has to be monitored every year, every month or whatever, because strategy, strategy has to be able to shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get new guy to get in the marketplace he drops his prices well what's your strategy to deal with that that's why the field of competitive uh, intelligence has emerged you need to be watching what your competitors do mm -hmm. what are some examples or <clears throat> a prime example that you can give in terms mm -hmm. of a product or service mm -hmm. and walk us through looking forensically let me use your word at <clears throat> the strategies that they would have used and they, they realize that their sales and profitability was not what they want, what, what they wanted. Okay. So when you want to, when you want to look at, uh, say your sales, you said your question was sales and profitability, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to focus on. Okay. What are the things that you want to take a look at? Well, let me put it, let me frame my answer this way. What are, what's some red flags that make a person feel like they have problems with their sales? Red flags would be your low market position. Mm-hmm your current position is being threatened. Uh, and this is what I get into with accountants, uh, Corinne, is accountants like to say everything is about the numbers, right? Yeah. But this is what this is the other side of it. Sa your numbers and your financials are a scorecard for your sales, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't make any sales, then that's going to affect your financials. Your financials are going to be lower. You Like you looked at one month, say a quarter, mm -hmm. why my sales go down 30% each month? Well, yeah, when you're accounting, you're counting all the numbers, up, but what happened before that? What led you to your sales being that, you know, going down or being low? Well, when you do forensic marketing, you want to look at red flags. Red flags, especially with strategy and profitability is, okay, did my market share decrease, mm -hmm. right? Did I look at my sales over the past year? I noticed that we went 10% every month lower in sales. Is it? consumer shifts so you want to look at red flags that's what mm -hmm. you want to look at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not look and look for the red flags look for any decrease in profitability or decrease in sales and i will try to give you that to give you a start so you have to do your investigation and you want to look at okay what's the things that are outside of the business and what are the things internally did we mm -hmm. lose customers mm -hmm. did we uh <clears throat> did we uh the customers jump ship to another competitor are we do we no longer serve the needs of a customer so you have to look at things like that but by the time you get around to doing that the, the shift has already happened and you're still behind how could you be ahead of the pack to be able to jump ahead of your competitors well what you want to do is and a lot of people don't do this you always want to keep your ear to the ground and always know your business in your industry you always want to know what's going on in your industry you don't want to be that guy that you, the, by the time you look at your sales, your sales are in a dumper. So you all, you want to be proactive. Okay. Cause trust me, if you look at your sales every month and your sales every month is a snapshot of how the business is doing during that month, which leads to the year. So you want to look at, okay, I noticed that we had sales dropped last month from this month and say maybe it's a 2% drop. Any, any percentage change, you want to look at that. And that's how you stay proactive with your business. And you don't want to be the guy 
a year later, you miss thirty thousand dollars in sales because you didn't look at that first month that you noticed the dip. Mm -hmm. So you want to look at those type of things. You want to look at what your sales are, compare your sales from the last month to the current month, and if there's a change. Now you also want to look at if there's an increase. Mm -hmm. Not just when something's bad. Okay, what do we? Well, how do we have a forty percent increase in sales? What is it that we're doing? And find out what it is you're doing and do more of it. Mm -hmm. Right? That makes mm -hmm. sense. But most people, oh, I'll take the money, and they just get complacent. And there you go, one, two, three. Now you're mm -hmm. not. Now you're not the main guy anymore. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you want to look at. You want to maintain. You want to monitor your sales. You want to monitor what's going on in your industry. You want to monitor your competitors. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what you want to do. You want to do mm -hmm. that on an ongoing basis. People who are authors in particular struggle with, with getting sales. And the persons who really are making it out there, they have like a, a real serious team, the bucket of funds, you know, to invest, plow into whatever ads, you know, getting even joint ventures with others collaborating with big names, whatever it takes, you know, to, to be able to, to get their name out there and to, get, and to generate sales. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why marketing is such a <laughs> dynamic field. It's, marketing is not one thing. Marketing mm -hmm. encompasses advertising, uh, products, your mm -hmm. strategy, your financials. How do, you, how, do you, how do you maintain your sales? How do you monitor your sales? All of those things are important because marketing is hard. It's not easy. Do you marketing, know, do you know that, sorry for cutting you, my darling. Do you know that in my email, well, yesterday, last time before I went to bed, uh -huh. I got an invitation from someone that I don't know at all. And they're inviting me to this because I'm a publisher and uh -huh. I'm, I'm a self-publishing consultant. So I'm also an author, et cetera. So I help persons to uh, publish their book awesome. and help authors. Yeah. So awesome. I got this email from this strange person. I'm like, they're inviting me to this conference and they sent me, I believe, a free link for this online conference, but it's also live. So people can attend it live. Um, oh. Somewhere, somewhere in the States, I believe it is. So I'm reading this and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know who this person is. Um, this is a free invitation, I think. So I said, you know, let me respond to it and say you know thanks for the invitation but how did you find out about me and get my email address i mean i'm i'm online anybody could get my email address i know that but right. the fact that they made the the effort to contact me is my is my thing so i'm like okay so i wrote to them and woke up this morning and in my email they're saying they make it their business to find out who are the the the, the leaders in the publishing industry and I'm like, oh, wow. I was like, whoa, they, you know, they say they make it their business to find out who are the, you know, the leaders. They use a particular phrase, but it, it was like leaders, you know. Thought the, leaders, they say thought leaders, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that, you know. Okay. I mean, I could look yeah. it up again, but not only thought leaders, but the people who are front runners, front runners okay. and leaders. So uh -huh. I said to myself, wait a minute, they think I'm a front runner? They think I'm a leader? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, but you see, all these little things give me feedback in terms of where I am. So when you talk about marketing, whatever it is I'm doing or not doing that I may not know that I'm doing, just like how we were talking off air, it is uh -huh. doing something out there that people are picking up. And how in heaven's name did they find me or heard of me or saw my name or know of me? I have no idea. You know, and sometimes, and sometimes you don't know what you're doing that's working. But well, hell, yes, but it's absolutely. Working. They yeah. probably found you because they consider you. Obviously, they sent you an invitation because they value your uh, credibility as a as a uh, thought leader. And they probably mm -hmm. said, "Let's do a search on uh, strong thought leaders in publishing." And your name probably came up, and they they were said, "We need to get her here." And you're so dynamic in your speaking abilities. You make excellent keynotes. Oh, thank you. So some of those things, some of those things are, are, are definitely would get people to want to uh, uh, invite you to events because that the, the marketing or uh, the presence that you bring is really critical. Yes. So absolutely. Well, absolutely. I appreciated that. I appreciated that. So I don't know where that can lead, but whatever it is I'm doing that I don't know that I'm doing, clearly I need to know more of what I'm not doing that I didn't know that I was doing. So <laughs> that sounds confusing 
but but you know it speaks to the marketing and and you know it's it's your present and some people feel that you have to put a lot of funds into what you're doing it doesn't have to be money into everything because when people look at my facebook people follow me a lot of people follow me a lot of people like a lot of people comment and people share i see a lot of people that i didn't know sharing my stuff liking me sending me friend requests and i'm like oh my god who are these people you know because of, oh, yeah. of the things that i say i share i you know because i'm all about positivism i'm all about building people i'm all about that so i your know, marketing is not that difficult i think like you talk about strategy it's just about who you are and to bring you into it and that actually that's that's the excellent point corinne and what and what what you have to do is when you with your your brand and everything that makes you what you are, you have to maximize your potential of your brand and attract people to you. Because the goal of marketing is to do what? Yeah. Attract customers, yeah. attract people, build yeah. sales, and build the brand. Everything is circular. So yeah. that, absolutely. So if there's an opportunity for you to go speak and and send get your products out, your books or whatever, mm -hmm. that is an opportunity for you because every some people have never heard of you, and that's an opportunity for you. Yes, yes, yes. People this don't get it, people that are not doing anything, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is crazy. But, you know, I mean, it, it meant a lot to me to get that email. But, but your book, your book, when is it going to be, be going to be available? Uh, I don't we're targeting uh, June. Now, I will definitely send you a copy of the book. If you give me your address, I'll send you a copy of the book. The book is uh, going to be, uh, they're designing a the cover right now. The book should be out June or July of this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to be on this show and talk about my book. I think my book should be required reading of anybody in the field of marketing and uh, that engages in marketing. My book should be required reading. Yes, very good. Very, very good. I like that. So you need to send me a copy, a personal copy signed by you. I will sign it for you. I'll put some gold on the, on the, on the cover. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And a nice little love note in there just for me. I will put a love note in there for you for having me on your show. And I just definitely, definitely thank you so much for having me on your show. I think that uh, this is wonderful that I'm talking about certain things that affect people's uh, livelihood, especially from a marketing perspective. Most yeah. people know how to do marketing, but most people can't do marketing. That's and right. They, marketing is, can be learned just yeah. like anything else, but that's half the battle if you try to learn it because that's you can right. learn anything. That's Absolutely. Right. Yeah, but if Absolutely. it's not your area, get experts to help you. If it's Absolutely. not your area, get experts. Don't try to do something that you're not good at. You're going to be struggling. It's going to be frustrating. You're going to be overwhelmed. It makes no sense. Get Absolutely. people to know what they're doing. Dr. Absolutely. Miles, I'm showing your handsome face on, on, on screen here, and I'm on uh -oh. your website. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't try that. You didn't want to show your real life face, but I got you here. <laughs> So your website is up, mdicorpventures.com, and I'm on your yes. bio so people can get to know more about you. And of course, people can contact you through the contact us page. I was also looking at your books, but that upcoming book is not featured yet. So by the time they get to the show or later on, of course, we can have a follow-up discussion about your book and what's happening. And, and by, that time, by that time, your book will be on your website showing off its lovely self. And I will make sure you have an advanced copy. I'll look Thank out for you. Thank you. I'm that special, people. I'm that special, people. So, you are so special. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Dr. Miles, or D, as you want me to call you, thank you so much for being on Between the Lines. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Corinne. I enjoyed it. We'll have to do it again. Definitely, definitely thank you for having me on your show. And uh, send me an invite on LinkedIn. We got to connect on LinkedIn. Oh, sure. We're going to connect everywhere. Facebook everywhere. That's not a problem. We can do awesome. that. Awesome. Let me know when you come to Texas again so we can do lunch. You I'll, need I'll to dinner. have boots. You need to have some boots for me to wear or else I ain't coming. Boots? Okay. Cowboy boots or regular boots? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can do both. We can do both. Cowboy and regular boots. I'll get you some snake skills. How's that? <laughs> oh, damn. I'm coming over too. I'm coming over there <laughs> Dr. Miles, you are such a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Corinne. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You have a blessed day. I really appreciate it. <laughs>